Well, what do you say we get some expert insight into the markets by calling on Steve Georgie of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois, to get his thoughts on what we're seeing developing here on a Monday in the early going. And uh, Steve, thank you for joining us here. And I, would, I just have some new information. Just hand it to me right off the press right now. It's our new export inspections numbers. Sure. I haven't even looked through them yet. Let's look at them together here and see what the numbers are. Okay, here we go with a look at our corn this past week. Uh, export inspections are now at 1.17 million metric tons. The week before was 1.49. I was looking back here at a year ago, it was 1.12. So fairly consistent, a little bit weaker than the previous week. Sorghum 155,910. The week before was 138,420. So a little pick up there. Soybeans 832,957. Previous week 620. 27,500 and a year ago uh, the total was only 387 so a nice improvement there on the soybean export inspections yep. uh, the wheat 641,365 compares to 572.9 uh, the week before and then last year was 340,000 so all in all they actually look pretty positive don't they you know, they, they do. They still show that we're, we're still very consistent with sales. You know, the big surprise there out of beans, you know, if there is one, beans showing some good numbers. So we still have sales. Last year at this time, we were losing sales to South America. Well, we're not really losing any sales yet. We still have stronger demand for beans. I think that's what's giving us a little bit of support here this morning as well. As well. Well, let's take a look at our futures trade and uh, see just where the markets really are in the corn market at the present time. Hanging on to those gains that we had uh, right after they announced that export sale this morning of 101,600 tons to unknown destinations. Uh, the May corn now four higher at 363 and a half. It is a penny off our high of the day, but still in the upper uh, third of the trading range. Uh, looking at the December, we're up three at 387 and a half. Now on the soybean side, we have the May contract tr uh, currently a penny lower at 941. And it had a high overnight of 949. November is down three quarters at 948 and three quarters. And they had a high earlier overnight of uh, 955. What's happening here in the soybean trade? Is this just uh, well, positioning before the report tomorrow or what happened? You know, I, I think so. And what we're going to do, we're going to just be reminded once again of big numbers. So tomorrow's report, the expectation showing close to 450 million carryout again for beans. I mean, these are, these are still some big numbers that we've got to sift through. Not only that, the CFTC report last week, as of last Tuesday, showing the funds basically with a non-position. So they basically are flat right now, and, and I think what you're getting at this point, you've got good weather ahead. We've seen big acres from that acreage number. The fear of what could come out tomorrow uh, as far as these estimates, $450 million, that's probably what's driving us a little bit lower here for this, for at least right now. Is part of the equation the fact that uh, the corn is getting support from the wet weather kind of maybe holding yeah. the planting off a little bit, and that would potentially mean even more soybean acres, do you think? That would, yes. It is still very early to discuss that. But now right. today we will have planting progress that's out. First official numbers for corn, I'm seeing estimates anywhere from 3% up to 7%. But still, first estimates coming out, this one doesn't really mean much. But as we go into the next few weeks, yes, if we do continue to see this rain come through, that would mean less corn acres, more bean acres uh, is, is what the trade will start looking at if this rain does uh, continue to come through. Okay, as we look at the wheat trade, now on Chicago wheat, Currently, we have that May contract three higher at 427. On the Kansas City market, we have the May contract now at 424 and a quarter. That's up two and a half. Minneapolis spring wheat trade, we have the May contract one and a half higher at 519 and three quarters. It had been lower earlier today, so they have rebounded a little bit here. Are you optimistic at all on the wheat market, uh, at least longer term or not? You know, I, I am. You know, in this time of year, we typically do show a little bit of optimism. Can we get some recovery? Can we see this market firm up? You know, we do. And once again, with these ending stocks tomorrow, 1.15 is the average trade guess, 1.15 billion carryout. That's still a lot of wheat. So to say, hey, can we get some optimism? Yes, we can see some spark or some life into this market. But still, overall, we can't expect this market really to start taking off yet unless we see some further problems. But still big, uh, big numbers to be shown here again tomorrow. All right, Steve, I'll bring you back here in a moment. We'll talk about our livestock trade too. Our guest, Steve Georgie, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
want to make sure that uh, we actually bring up our cotton quotes here, get you updated there on the July contract on the cotton. We are still higher. We're 31 points higher at 75.78 per pound. Got as high early this morning of 78. Uh, excuse me, 76.38 per pound. Uh, December new crop cotton now 26 points higher at 72.55. So a uh, bit of a rebound after kind of a tough week last week where they really uh, sold off the cotton trade for a few days. Let's go back to Steve Georgie of Allendale Incorporated. And he's based in McHenry, Illinois. He joins us on the phone. And uh, as we take a look at the livestock trade, it's uh, a Wild West activity here in the cattle market today. Third day in a row, big, big gains. What's up? Well, a lot of these headline stories that have been coming out with China, uh, and, and really China leading these headlines, that they're, per, they're prepared to basically lift the U.S. ban for beef. First time, now this is feedlot style beef. Uh, first time since 2003, if that does occur. But a lot of this is, is a what if scenario. So you've got China making headlines with this story, but then also you read the very next thing saying, uh, that Brazil is going to be back to normal after their debacle that they've had. They're going to be back to normal here in April and May, uh, back to normal as far as exports once again. So how much is this really going to affect us? I don't know. This may just be an exciting story for a Monday. Um, but right now, these are, the, these are the stories that are in the headlines that are pushing these markets this morning. Okay, let's look at the futures and on the live cattle board right now, we currently have the uh, uh, June contract up $1.08 at one twelve eighty eight. So it has backed off about 80 cents now from our earlier high. August up 97 at one hundred eight ninety five. On the feeder cattle side, uh, we currently have that May contract up $1.84 at one thirty five seventy two. But hold the phone, that's a little over a dollar now off of our earlier high. So it, it really uh, rocketed higher in the early going and then kind of flamed out a bit. Uh, August up $1.80 three now at 137.48 still strong gains nonetheless on the lean hog trade right now you have your uh, April contract down seven May down 35 at 68.65 June down 18 Steve thanks for the comments appreciate it very much you bet Thank Steve you Georgie, he's with Allendale Incorporated in McHenry Illinois